And um, so this is the June 12th um, meeting of the pedestrian um, bicycle subcommittee of uh, transportation and parking. Uh, we are um, hybrid. We have one member in, uh, two members in person, myself and Brett. Um, and then we have the rest of the quorum, um, Freeman and Donna um, are also present. So we'll go ahead and start with public comment. Um, so if anybody has a public comment, um, Elena, I saw your hand quickly go up. <laughs> so go ahead. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you all. Um, I haven't been able to join these meetings. Sorry, there's a really bad echo. Is it just me? No, Freeman hears it too. Well done. Why would go across? Um, hmm. Do you, is is my voice echoing also? No, your voice isn't. Okay. And now it seems like my voice is fixed. Um, so whatever you did, it worked. Um, so I haven't been able to join these meetings in a while since the time has moved to 3 p.m., which makes it tough with my work schedule. Um, but I do appreciate that they're still hybrid. Um, I had two um, public comments that I wanted to raise today. Um, in hopes that the committee would um, bring them to a future agenda item, or maybe I can get some quick answers um, while we're here. But one being Valley Bikes. I know um, I noticed that it wasn't on the agenda for today, but I also heard um, through the press release that um, they were supposed to start up the end of May, and here we are mid-June. Um, so curious if you have a status update, Carolyn, on where those are at. Um, and then my second one is just around the detour of um, the bike path that's happening um, from Jackson Street down to Stoddard Ave. Um, really appreciate Donna letting Friends of Northampton Trails know um, with a little bit of notice um, that we were able to announce it to our listserv, which has about 900 people on it. Um, we've also been able to post it on our social media. Um, but something that I would ask for this committee in particular is that that conversation be had. Um, and again, this might have happened last month. I just I haven't been able to join. Um, but I think in a in a more perfect world, we would have Donna bringing those types of upcoming projects to this committee and this committee having a really robust conversation and troubleshooting around the best ways in which we can um, provide a safe detour for cyclists and pedestrians. Um, I've heard feedback from community members saying that it's um, pretty dangerous. I know that there's parking um, right up by Jackson Street at that intersection. Um, and so there's no bike lane there. Um, I know that there's been some conflict with a lot more pedestrians on the sidewalk because of the bike uh, trail being closed. And so cyclists that are riding on the sidewalk, there's been conflict there as well. And then also there's a large number of cyclists who are riding on the sidewalk um, on Jackson Street in particular because they don't feel safe because it's such a narrow street. And so I think in the future when we do have closures and especially when we're planning to close the entire segment of the rail trail from Stoddard to Look Park, this committee should really be in a position to have that conversation with Donna and others at DPW so that we make accommodations um, for cyclists and pedestrians to safely um, uh, have, have a safer detour because what we have right now is not great. And I know DPW is has limited staff and I know it's just really challenging um, to think through all of that. And that's where this committee has a lot of expertise and resources to think through that. And so I just call on the city again to bring those up with this committee, because if not here, then where? And I think we're finding ourselves in this situation where we have really unsafe conditions for cyclists and pedestrians during this two month closure on the rail trail. And it's really unfortunate that we weren't able to come up with something and be a little bit more proactive to have something safer for those folks. And, you know, it's, I, school is almost out yet, if not already out yet. And I know a lot of students use that corridor to get to and from school. So there's a safe routes component there. I also know people use the bike trail, especially this time of year for commuting purposes. And, you know, again, it's just 
it's not safe what we have set up right now. And it's really unfortunate that we weren't able to be proactive around setting up a safe detour. Um, so just hope that in the future, especially for the repaving, um, that conversation can be had here and we can think um, creatively around ways to, to make it safer for folks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, any other public comment? Um, just real quick. Okay. So um, everybody, I'm Benjamin Spencer and um, I was just hoping to take a minute to invite everyone in this group and anyone who might see this meeting um, to the next Strong Towns Northampton uh, group meeting. There's been a Strong Towns group that got started <clears throat> earlier this year. We've probably had a half dozen meetings, their monthly meetings. Um, we've also done two walks so far this year, which have been really successful and really fun. We did one walk down the length of King Street, starting at the rail trail, and another walk down the length of Pleasant Street, starting at Sweeties and going to um, the Rotary and then coming back on cons, just kind of yeah, taking in the streetscape. So roundabout. The roundabout. I'm sorry. What did I say? Rotary? Oh, my goodness. Ah, my apologies. So, um, so, uh, so anyhow, um, a lot of folks uh, thinking about uh, the same things that this group is thinking about, a really good group of people. Um, we're also, we've got people from East Hampton coming as well, trying to sort of figure out ways to um, sort of amplify the need for, you know, the um, bike lanes and safe streets and walkability. And um, and I just would really recommend um, folks folks join us and and if you would like um, to put us on an agenda for an upcoming bicycle and pedestrian subcommittee meeting, myself, my sort of co-conspirator uh, Danny, who held, started the group back up, um, would be glad to come in. So that's um, that's pretty much what I wanted to share. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Um... I don't see any other public comments. So we have, like I said, we have a very small agenda, but um, Donna um, has um, wanted to talk about some updates around the Smith College vicinity. So you're up, Donna. Okay, hi everyone. So yeah, Smith College has generously agreed to uh, fund some improvements uh, on the Route 9 and Route 66 corridors abutting their campus. So I think um, we've discussed at this committee before, or the subcommittee before, um, that they made a donation for a traffic study, um, which was completed some months ago. And out of the traffic study arose recommendations for the installation of RRFBs, also known as Rapid Rectangular Flashing Beacon. So those push button activated lights at um, pedestrian crossings. Um, so those were the primary recommendations within the report, although there were certainly many others. So um, we have been working on designing the implementation of five RRFBs at targeted crosswalks. Um, we recently put that out to bid. Um, we received a really good uh, bid price, actually right on our estimate, uh, about $144,000. And so what we are going to be able to do uh, again, and this was a, a gift from Smith College to fund the installation of these RRFBs. So we are going to be uh, engaging our contractors, Pine Ridge Technologies. So they do a lot of streetlight work for the city as well. So a good solid contractor, we're very happy with them. Um, so we're going to be installing RRFBs at West and Arnold Avenue, West Street and Green Street. Elm Street and Henshaw Avenue, Elm Street at Paradise Road, and uh, West Street at the uh, facilities building, at the Smith facilities building. So right when you cross through the, the levee penetration and, and kind of go by the, um, the substation there, um, there's a crosswalk that um, may catch drivers by surprise as they enter the city, um, and it, it can tend to be a little bit dark down there. Um, so I think that this would be a great um, improvement for this entire corridor, and we thank Smith for their generosity. Um, we're going to be executing that contract shortly uh, and mobilizing the contractor. We uh, expect, if all goes well, that this work will be completed on or around the time that um, the students come back to school. That's the plan. We certainly can't control like supply chain problems 
you know, sometimes we struggle to get uh, equipment, but um, hopefully, you know, these are kind of off the shelf things and um, we can get this job done. So $144,000 for five of these is a gift to the city. Um, and, and I think it'll make a big difference. Um, we're certainly continuing to look at uh, other ways to improve the area, but at the very least, uh, pedestrians uh, may feel a little bit more comfortable um, if they have a little better visibility, especially in, um, you know, uh, rain and, and uh, poor lighting situations um, as, as the weather turns colder and, and the time change and so on. So um, that is my update around Smith College. You know, take questions if there are any. Donna, um, this doesn't include the the other work that was discussed with Smith around the West and Green Street to sort of do a curb bump outs or painting, does it? Yeah, so we had bid this with that uh, as an alternate, um, you know, because we're, I mean, we have a finite amount of money to work with um, from their gifts. So um, we had bid uh, like a painted curb extension set up there. Um, and that bid price came in uh, higher than we would have liked to have seen. So there's there's just not enough um, funding to get the contract signed and get everything moving um, in the time frame we want to see it moving. Um, so it, you know the additional issue is that it, that's kind of a temporary solution, right? To paint the ground and and you know is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Um, what you really want to see is like a hardscape improvement and, and you know, you, you want the curb moved there. And that was the conversation that I had with Smith last week, um, you know, with $60,000 to, you know, paint the ground and, and put in some uh, fluorescent delineators. And, you know, it just felt like um, kind of a steep price tag for, you um, something which really needs to be permanent you know it's it, mm -hmm. it's great if it was a, a lesser amount of money i think it's a worthy um thing to do but we didn't have enough money to sign the contract and everything would have had to stop while we sort of worked through that process um and that's going to delay the implementation of um all of these measures so we we thought it best to just proceed let's get the rfps in and then we can have a conversation around moving curb lines or some other type of temporary installation. And presumably that would require some amount of design uh, initially anyway. Is that right? To do it, the curb extension, it, the hardscape? It, it would. I mean, there's, you know, we have a design just to paint it. I mean, this paint is like ridiculously expensive. You know, colored paint on the ground is, it is like, mind-numbingly expensive. You know, those green rail trail crossings that we have, um, it, you know, the, the the cost of that paint were, were, it is quite surprising. Um, so yes, there is a design for like paint, but we would have to go back if we were actually going to move the curb. You know, that requires a, um, a drainage modifications. You know, anytime you're moving a curb line, that, that can turn into a little bit of a utility project. So yes, further design on that would be required. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I am. I don't. The the only updates I have. I think the next item is really just general updates. Um, you know, I can speak to the Valley Bike question. Um, there. There shouldn't have been a statement that Valley bikes were coming back at the end of May. I think there was a hope that they might be able to get them at the end of May. So um, um, that is, we got a little bit side, not sidetracked, but the contract processing took a little bit longer. So that pushed the timeline a bit. Um, the other um piece of that equation for drop mobility is that they are wanting to make sure they've got everything ready to go to literally put all the bikes out at once and not do it phased. So um, we they're making sure everything's set and ready to go. And um, they've told us more recently that it'll be probably, they're hoping for mid-July. 
um, for relaunch, but there will be the entire system at that time as opposed to a phase in. Um, so that's the update on that piece. I had a quick follow-up question on that, Carolyn. Are they mm -hmm. planning to do year-round mm -hmm. service or just seasonal? Um, it really um, depends. They're definitely interested in providing year-round service, but it's a conversation with the communities and um, and sort of and and the bikes. But they are they believe that that's you know their focus is a transportation system, and so from their perspective, it's not transportation if you shut down for you know three months of the year. Um, so it's really a conversation with the communities and with DROP about that. So to be continued. <clears throat> um, and I, I think that's all I have. Um, I don't really have, things are just moving along pretty um slowly with the Rocky Hill Greenway construction project. The plan for that is to go out to bid, uh, not go out to bid till early January. So it's just become, it continued to be a very slow process for that. So, Sure. Um, any updates on the MassDOT 75% Main Street redesign? Um, so 75% plans for uh, Main Street have been um, a six, were through the comment period and um, those are on our posted on our website. Oh. Um, the comments or the plans? The plans. Okay. Um, not the entire 229 sheet set, okay. but the the sets that I think are probably most relevant for most people. <laughs> um, so we're moving towards 100% um, plans and um, getting um, phasing worked out. Nice. Yep. Ah, under the FAQ, um, like how would you find those plans on the city's website? Is it under? There's a picture Main Street page. Yep. And so, so it's in there. It's within there. Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Yep. Is there anything that you need from this subcommittee in terms of uh, outreach or education um, to the public and or the businesses? Um, not at this time. We are, we have um, started, there's a committee um, uh, that the city has convened with the um, business community. So we've got chamber and DNA reps and business, some business owners on the committee. Um, and they're putting that committee is focused on a um, uh, right now sort of a communication campaign and sort of developing the framework for that. And then the other piece of that is we um, the mayor's office applied for a grant um, to the state for um, support on, um, you know, basically best practices for during construction um, and, and supporting downtown during construction. And so getting, um, you know, them on board if we are successful with the grant. So we're hoping that will come through later this summer. It will help us um, help steer the committee and support downtown during the process of construction. Hmm. All right, no other comments? Um, um, yeah, go Karen, ahead. Carolyn? Yeah. You know, um, in light of what Elena has said and what Ben just asked and Brett asked about the committee, I've been thinking about is if there's anything else that our committee could specifically been working on be, be, and contributing because Sometimes I sit here thinking, well, what am I actually adding to this process? You know, I, I don't seem to have, I don't have the, the expertise. I have, you know, the experience as a user, but I don't have any great expertise. And I'd really love to be able to um, contribute, but I don't know exactly how. And, and I was wondering if maybe that's a conversation we could have. Um, 
uh, or if that issue has been discussed in the past, or if just being present here is what the committee is for, and and to give um, a relative, my relatively uninformed uh, input. I mean, I'd be. I think um, given the comments that were raised, both about. Uh, Main Street, and then also potentially supporting during construction, and and sort of mapping out or identifying um, or providing assistance at, relative to detours, uh, we can certainly put that on another agenda on the next agenda. Um, I will say, yeah, I'm just looking. I mean, that's going to be July. I don't know how many people are going to be available in July and August, but we could certainly start the conversation. Um, I know for the August meeting, I'll probably just have to cancel because I'm not going to be available in August um, for that date. So, is it possible to reschedule the August meeting? Yeah, um, potentially. Would just, I mean, I have to see who else is available on what days. You know, so yep. Um, but it might be, you know, we'll probably be spread pretty thin for both July and August. Just with different schedules for everybody. So I don't imagine that in either meeting there would be, you know, full complement of members. Well, uh, go ahead. Uh, I was only gonna say that uh, I appreciate the question and I feel like part of the answer besides what we can think of might be to ask our umbrella committee, TPC, if there is something that, that we can do for them to help in their work that is still under our uh, bicycle and pedestrian purview. Yeah. So if, yeah. If, if the committee would like me to take that to them as a question, we could do that. It would be very helpful for me to have, uh, you know, to have a conversation, especially, you know, when Nick and, and, um, um uh, uh the members are are present you know who have a little more experience um you know James and Nick I think in particular I think it would be really helpful for me just to hear about what are the kinds of things that could potentially be useful and and yeah Brett I, I that would be great to to ask from from my perspective It sounds like maybe we should have that discussion internally before we bring that to TPC. Is that? Um, yeah, I mean, you can have that conversation about what you think might be helpful and then, you know, bring it up and confirm, I guess. Um, yeah. Sounds good to me. Oh. Okay. I'll put it on July and see how many people can show up for July's meeting. <laughs> go from there okay great well if that's all there is i guess officially we'd have to have a motion to adjourn somebody wants to do that don't move. i don't want to, i just want to sit here and talk all day but um <laughs> Freeman, i'm sorry yeah i move i move that we adjourn a second <laughs> okay uh roll call freeman Yes. Um, Donna. Yes. Um, Brett. Yeah. Okay, you're not going to say. <laughs> um, and I'll confirm. <laughs> so that's unanimous. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you.